burn it, burn it, burn it, burn it. I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Oh, wait. Now I am. Get away, get away, get away. Oh. Howdy, folks. My name is Richie, a.k.a. Bogotter, and I am here with an Ascalonian Catacombs Dungeon Revamp Overview. The Flame and Frost patch, A Gathering Storm, which is the February content update for Guild Wars 2, has landed, and they have revamped a lot of the encounters in the explorable mode paths of this dungeon. So I'm going to go through uh, my impressions and my opinions and, and some of the overall changes, so let's get to it. We're going to start off by going over all of the things that are consistent between all three explorable modes. So we're going to cover the encounters that you will do uh, in all three explorable mode paths. Now the first is the Queen Spider and you will notice first that you cannot skip this boss any longer. And it is a much harder fight overall. The poison patches that they put down uh, is much more deadly. She has this new frontal cone immobilized. At least the graphic part of it is new so you can get stuck in place and if you get stuck in a poison patch it's really bad. It's still behooves you to kill the little spiders before you engage the boss take out as many of the gargoyle traps on the, on the walls as you can and make sure you have a lot of condition removal overall i wish this encounter had a little bit more variety to it since you do encounter it in all three explorable mode paths some new mechanics to avoid some different types of ads just something to kind of spice it up a little bit in general, this encounter is much more difficult than it was before, and, and that's a good thing, but it might prove a little bit too challenging for some low-level party members. After defeating the Queen Spider, you will face a pack of Gravelings, and the revamped Graveling Stalker is a champion-level mob that is really obnoxious. One of the abilities it has is to gain evasion on hit, which avoids damage, and it will also tunnel underneath and then pop up out of the ground and knock you down. It's very obnoxious to fight this. You will spend half the time not doing any damage to it, and it has a lot of health, so it is a kind of long, drawn-out fight. The good news is now champion-level mobs will always drop blue or better loot, and uh, we, we, we found it fun to kind of nickname these guys Blues or Better. So, hey, you will face these several times, but hey, at least you'll get Blues or Better. Lieutenant Kohler, a.k.a. Tyria's most skippable boss, has also been revamped. It's much more fun now. He spawns a lot more ads that you have to take out. And the Dagger Storm Whirlwind of Death thing he does is actually not as deadly. So you don't have to worry about being one-shotted as much. He is still very skippable. You don't have to do it. And he is available in all three uh, explorable mode paths. But we found the, the event much more fun to do. So hopefully players won't skip him as often. No, that's not going to happen. They're still going to skip them. Okay, let's see. What are we going to cover next? Oh, troll in the dungeon. Thought you ought to know. Yes, the cave troll is back and he is bad. He is mean. He has several new abilities that'll prove challenging. He can fear you, and yes, he can fear you right off the cliff and take you out of the fight for a while. He will do a leaping smash where he jumps up in the air and then he shoots out projectiles when he lands, so be ready to dodge. And he also shoots lightning bolts. Come on, guys. This is a cave troll throwing lightning bolts. This is crazy stuff. He also has a ton of health. You know, a, a lot of the creatures in this dungeon have had a reduction in health, which makes the fights not seem as just like, you know, uh, mind-numbingly boring. But this fight definitely feels too long by a bit. Uh, it is a tough fight, and uh, he still does spawn in random locations. Let's take a look at our first Explorable Path specific encounter. In Explorable Path 1, you will defend Hodgins while he researches the location of the first Flame Scepter. And there's a whole bunch of Graveling Burrows you have to deal with while he's doing that. I'm typically the one that stays back and defends Hodgins, and I found it much more difficult now. The Gravelings do knock you down quite a bit, and they also seem to have some sort of cleave, or, or they just seem to attach themselves to Hodgins much easier. In, the, in previous incarnations of... The this uh, dungeon, I was able to stand on Hodgins and basically, you know, beat back anything that came at him. But that actually led to him dying really quickly. So now I kind of uh, moved over to the first burrow over here and uh, fought things off more from away from Hodgins, and that seemed to do the trick. 
Overall, this encounter seemed a little bit harder than it used to be, but the breeders do not spawn from these Graveling burrows anymore, so that's a plus. Everything else about Explorable Path 1 felt very similar. The finding the scepter pieces worked the, worked the same. You know, you still will encounter more of those champion Gravelings, and there was a lot more knockdowns around, but overall, everything felt very similar. When we got to the Howling King, things changed quite a bit. The first thing is a quality of life thing. The room that he you fight him in no longer has trash in it. So you can use that whole room for the encounter, which is just awesome. It's a much better setup. Now, he does fire a giant laser beam now. And it is a really cool graphic. And it is still very deadly, so you want to get out of that. And there's also lots of ads that will spawn. And you can quickly be overwhelmed by them. But Hodgins actually makes himself useful. He takes those dual flame scepters and he creates rings of fire on the ground. And if you leave the packs of gravelings that spawn uh, through the fire they die almost instantly so that may that's the kind of the key to the encounter to keep control of the gravelings by using Hodgins ring of fire bring out the ring of fire you said you could do it Okay, on to explorable path number two with Detha. A lot of this feels similar. You know, you will still go through the spider and the champion gravelings and all those kind of things that you have to, but when you get to the explorable path specific stuff for explorable path two, uh, I didn't find too many uh, changes up until the boss. The spike trap event felt similar. Everything else was just going along smoothly. Uh, when we get to the final boss area, where Detha is setting up the traps for the final encounter, um, those packs of ghosts seem a little bit easier to, to manage. Before, you would get like double necromancers or something like that, and it would be really difficult. And uh, this seemed uh, to be to go much smoother now. I don't know how much they changed there or not. This is just the kind of feeling I got. Now, the event itself, the final boss event, the Ghost Eater boss, is totally awesome. You probably have already heard about this on forums and stuff. They, they made this boss really a lot of fun. Ghost Eater is immune to damage unless you actually make it vulnerable. The way to do that is using death as traps. Now, each of the traps needs to be charged up, and you can see the power meter on the uh, right-hand side of the screen with the tracking meter. The way to do that is you have to pick up these anti-spectral ordnance guns, which are basically Ghostbuster, you know, ghost packs. Um, and you need to hit number one to actually levitate one of these ectoplasmic oozes. And then another player has to press number two to draw the ooze in. And you have to use positional awareness to actually get these oozes to float over the traps, which helps charge it up. Once you charge the trap fully up, you got to lead Ghost Eater over one of the traps and you will make him vulnerable to damage for a brief period of time. It takes a little bit to get into the groove and coordinate with your allies, but once you get the hang of it, it's a lot of fun. And one of the awesome things about it is a complaint that I've had for several other bosses. Once you get the gimmick, once you understand how it works and the strategy, you don't have to do this fight for 15 minutes in order to get it down. We were able to take out the Ghost Eater just by leading him over three traps, and it seemed like the perfect amount of time once we got the swing of things. Overall, this is a great encounter, unique mechanic, and a lot of fun. and I ain't afraid of no ghosts. Moving on to Explorable Path 3 with the adventures of Zark. I find a lot of these events felt very similar. The Essence Collection quest where you're basically defending the room from countless Graveling spawns. This still felt like too long of an event and you do find yourself on your butt a lot because they knock down constantly, but overall it felt very similar. Same thing with the uh, Burrow event that uh, follows this where you're basically going around and just stomping burrows. Not too much change there. Okay, on to the final boss of uh, Explorable Path 3, Colossus Rumbless has been updated. Again, there's no trash in this room, so you can head right in. Now, you will have to take advantage of another NPC's ability. War Master Grass will create a huge bubble that you have to stand in when he does it because there are so many more rocks that fall over all over the screen and they will knock you back and kill you instantly. So make sure you stack up near War Master Grass and you shouldn't have much problem with this event. If you do somehow fail and War Master Grasp dies in a bad location, it could be hard to start this event again because you're going to kind of have to rush in and try to res him and there's going to be rocks falling everywhere. So doing this on the first attempt is preferable. 
Overall, I think ArenaNet did a fantastic job of revamping the Ascalonian Catacombs. It's a lot more fun to go through. It's much more of a challenge, which is sorely needed in this game. The ability to actually wipe on an encounter is a great addition. Uh, the Ghost Eater boss encounter is one of my favorite in the game right now. The other two bosses are, aren't as fun, but they still have better mechanics than they did before. They take advantage of the NPCs that you're escorting everywhere, and now they actually have some sort of function, which is great. Um, the spider boss is harder, um, Kohler is more uh, more forgiving, the cave troll still takes too long. Now, not everything is good news. I think the trash actually got a little bit worse. They, they knock you down constantly, and then there's those champion gravelings that burrow underground and get the evasion and take too long. Um, it, it's not fun mechanic to have the, the, the trash evade you, and knocking down constantly, not so much fun either. Overall, though, I am happy with this revamp, and I can't wait to see what they do for the other dungeon paths. Well, that's going to wrap things up. I hope everybody enjoyed this video. Please like, favorite, subscribe, and do all that good stuff so that I can continue to grow my channel. And I hope everybody has a fantastic day. Take care.